Drought and water conservation requirements have made rain barrels more important than ever. Here in California that is doubly true, as our entire state is in drought condition, and locally we are in the most severe tier of drought. We installed several hundred gallons worth of storage on our property, and they have worked out well, but there is one major downside. It can be a rather tedious process to pull the water out of the system. There isn't enough pressure to use a hose, and filling the water in cans is a huge time sink. Initially, I looked into purchasing pumps for the rain barrels, but they are sold on a per barrel basis using drop-in pumps, which would have been expensive and inefficient. Many people use sump pumps or utility pumps, and they work well, but they require priming with water or oil, and they don't turn off automatically, which makes it easy to burn them out if you aren't careful. In this video, I will show you how to put together a quick and cheap DIY rain barrel pump that has worked very well for us. It makes watering from a barrel simple and efficient. It also works great as a water mover so that you can put water from place to place and as a great camping shower. It is self-priming, turns itself on and off as you use it, and provides a steady uninterrupted supply of water in a tidy little package. The first thing that you will need is a water pump. There's a lot of options for these, but you want to make sure the one you choose is self-priming, AC powered, quiet, and automatically starts and stops. This variety is commonly used in boats and RVs. They all say they use standard threads, but so far in my research, almost none of them do, and they will absolutely strip out, so I don't recommend trying to find fixtures for them. Instead, you will use the included half-inch hose adapters. It also comes with a tiny filter. If you only plan to use completely clean water, this might be sufficient, but I'd recommend a bigger one. A half-inch heavy-duty rubber hose. This hose needs to be sturdy enough so that it doesn't collapse under the suction, along with a hose repair kit, hose clamps, an optional but highly recommended extra large sediment filter, optional quick connects to make putting it together easier, some scrap wood, and to button it all up, a small cheapo toolbox and four 2 inch 1024 screws with nuts and eight watchers to match. The first step is to cut two 2.5 inch lengths of hose. Then you clamp them down over the adapters, and finally the hose ends. You need one female and one male, hand tighten only. Flip over the shelf in the toolbox. Here you will see the arrow that indicates the direction of flow for the pump. This matters for where you place your filter. You always want your filter to get the water before it goes in the pump, so make sure it's against the stream. Place the pump on the top with the heaviest part in the center, favoring either the left or right side to keep space for the attachments. Once you are happy with the placement, mark the four locations that you will be adding the screws. Flip the shelf back over and add the scrap wood. Make sure it covers the locations that you have marked. Clamp that wood to the shelf. Drill holes to the shelf and scrap wood. Put washers on your screws and push them through the wooden shelf into the bottom of the pump's feet. Use a washer on the other side along with your nut. Hand tighten the screw. Make sure you do not compress the rubber feet of the pump. When you want to use the kit, you pull the accessories, turn over the insert, and plug it all in. You can either use an extension cable, or if you're like me and don't have a convenient plug, you can use a solar generator, like this Blue Eddy AC50S, that will power it for hours upon hours, anywhere that you need it. There's more information about this in my other videos linked below. That's all there is to it. If you have extra hose, you can use the extra repair kit and make a cheapo extension. When you do use the kit, try not to let it run dry for too long. Sometimes you will need to use the suction to clear out a sediment buildup in the rain barrel nozzle but make sure the pump doesn't get too hot or you'll decrease its life expectancy. Depending on the height differences between the pump and your water source, you will occasionally need to help the pump out by filling the hose with water, as it has much more suction pulling water than air. We also use this setup to drain our kiddie pool into the rain barrels after they are empty. That lets us give the kids a way to cool off in the summer without feeling too terrible about wasting water. It's also great as a camping shower. We bungee cord the hose to a tree and pull water from a five gallon bucket. If you have any questions, please let me know below I've included the list of products used to make the device as well as some video links for the battery in the description. Thanks for watching and have a great day.